Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. So Allah Khan here. And today, I've not written anything on the board. The topic you've already seen. It is the trigonometric Fourier series. Now, uh, the, the series expansion that we've seen till now, uh, basically in a number of videos, was the complex exponential Fourier series. And the trigonometric, we saw form uh, of the Fourier series, that is the trigonometric Fourier series, in the introduction video, but we did not touch it. So, you know, I said that let us make a video or two on the trigonometric Fourier series. And in this video, what is my goal? My goal would to be uh, to, to, you know, uh, derive that equation of, of a trigonometric Fourier series from the complex exponential. So that we also understand that this is one and the same thing. If it's a complex exponential Fourier series or if it is a, mm, you know what, trigonometric Fourier, this is one and the same thing. So let's say I don't get very heading over here. I directly start with the synthesis equation. So what was the synthesis equation in the complex exponential series that my x of t can be represented as a summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity a k exponential of j k omega naught t so this is my uh, for for complex exponential Fourier series now what are a k so these are the Fourier series coefficients these are the Fourier series coefficients are a k Fine. Now what do I do it? What do I do it? Let's say, let's say I expand this. I expand this. So, so let me write over here that I am doing what? I am expanding this. Which means what? That I am giving this values. So which means that my x of t would now, this summation would take values from a negative infinity. So this is coming from a negative infinity. Let's say I start with some value plus 4, plus 3 let's say. So if I would have a minus 3 now, so, so this would be a plus A of minus 3 exponential of negative J3 omega naught T. Similarly, then you have a negative 2 exponential of negative J omega naught T. Then you have a plus A negative 1 exponential of J negative J omega naught T. Then for k equal to 0, you have an A naught plus an A naught, fine. And then what do you have what? For the positive values, now you have plus a1 exponential of j omega naught t then you have an a2 exponential of j2 omega naught t similarly plus a3 exponential of j3 omega naught t and similarly this continues so let me have a break for this azar okay now what do you have right what are we doing basically we are going to sum all of these things from a negative infinity to a positive infinity you know that very well now what do we do let's say let's say i consider any two of them of the same harmonic of the same frequency so so let's say i consider what say i am considering the with the with the one with the first harmonic so i say that we have a negative one exponential of negative j omega naught t plus a one exponential of j omega naught t so this is what i have considered fine this is my because i'm summing all of them let's say i take any two components of them fine now what do I do it? If I have my case number 1, if a of negative 1 is equal to a1 and the value is 1, so this summation would imply what? This summation would imply that this would be an exponential of j omega naught t plus an exponential of negative j omega naught t. Isn't it like this? Fine it is similarly if i have a one is equal to one and a negative one is equal to negative one so then this summation would imply what it would be an exponential of j omega naught t minus exponential of minus j omega naught t won't it be like this it would be 
So this means what? Have a look. Have a look. If you multiply and divide this by a 2, isn't this representation of cos? If you multiply and divide this by a 2j, isn't this representation of a sine? If I divide and multiply this by 2, this is a cos term. If I multiply and divide this by a 2j, this is a sine term. Isn't it like this? It is. Fine. Let's say I consider another case. I consider a1 and a negative 1 to be complex. So if my a1 is 1 plus j2, a negative 1 is 1 minus j2, this would imply what? So let me see. Yeah. So, so you would have a 1 plus j2 uh, multiplied with uh, j omega naught t 1 plus j2 multiplied with exponential of j omega naught t and then you have what a plus so 1 minus j2 exponential of negative j omega naught t won't it be like this it will be now what you do is you multiply so one exponential omega naught t then you have one exponential negative omega naught t then j2 exponential omega naught then j2 negative omega naught so i'm trying to sum it up i will give you the final result and the final result would be exponential of j omega naught t plus so this would give me an exponential of j omega naught t plus exponential of negative j omega naught t and then from here you take the j2 common let's say i take plus j2 common i would have an exponential of j omega naught t minus exponential of minus j omega naught t and want it to be like this it would be so now have a look again have a look again if I multiply and divide this term by a 2, if I multiply and divide this term by a 2j, so won't this give me a cos term? Won't this give me a sine term? It will. It will. So, the point to make is, the point to make is that each of this signal, you know, this expansion could be written in terms of sines and cosines as well. So this is where it would lead to the, to the what, to the trigonometric Fourier series, right? So what do we have that the complex exponential Fourier series coefficients could have what could have either a cause function either have cause terms either have sine terms or they could have a combination of both of them and which I write it like this my x of t is what i can write it like this that x of t would be first of all you know you have your dc value that state as it is you have a naught plus you have the the cos terms and then plus you have the sine terms isn't it like this and now if i write the relation if i write the relation so my x of t is equal to a naught plus plus what plus summation n running from 1 to infinity yes plus summation n running from 1 to infinity you have a n cos of n omega naught t and then you have plus the summation uh, uh, again n running from 1 to infinity you have a b n a sign now this time this time you have bn sine of n omega naught t and this is what my trigonometric Fourier series is. Now in the introductory video I have also written this sort of a relation. It may not be exactly the same, the mathematical representation could be different depending on some mathematical operation. Rather it's one in the same thing, otherwise it's one in the same thing. So this is now my relation for what? For the trigonometric Fourier series is that fine till here it should be so now the next step is the next step is you know we know the uh, uh, well we would be finding the DC value as well so the next step is to find this DC value to find these these a n's and to find these b n's what does this represent is that it is only you know we are seeing that it consists of the sine terms it consists of the cosine terms so cos and omega naught t would depend on the value of n sine and omega naught t would depend on the value of n and omega naught 
but 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 a n so so a n how to find a n what is the relation between a n and n so we need to find these things so for that what do we do we expand this we expand this so let me write that i am doing what i am expanding it so expanding would mean what that my x of t is equal to a naught then you have a plus so a1 cos of omega naught t then you have a plus a2 cos of 2 omega naught t similarly plus a3 cos of 3 omega naught t it goes on and on plus 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 a n cos of n omega naught t this is the summation similarly then you have what you have a plus then comes the b term so b1 sin of 1 omega naught t plus b2 sin of 2 omega naught t plus b3 sin of 3 omega naught t and plus up to plus this goes on and on and on till bn sin of n omega naught t and i believe this is fine now let's say i remove the board okay let's say i remove the board okay the next step is what the next step is to integrate this thing over one period so let me write with the red color and i will do it in the same step to to you know integrate over one period so so let me write over here from zero to t let's say and similarly this one from zero to t and, and so dt over here and let's say i enclosed everything in a bracket and I have a dt over here. So now you know uh, this uh, mathematically that the integration of cos over one period is zero, the integration of sine over one period is zero, sine of t dt is equal to the integration of cos over one period is equal to zero, fine. Similarly, if you have the product of the two and then over one period, sine of t into cos of t, still you have it a zero similarly if you have two angles of cos or sine cos x1 of t into cos of x2 of t still the 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 integration would be zero and similarly for sine fine so now what would i have this term would get zero this would zero two may three would this everything would get zero b and would get zero the only thing remaining would be my a naught so if I have the integration from 0 to t, let's say x of t dt, this is equal to a naught would come outside of the integration and the integration from 0 to t dt. So this integration would give you a t, right? a naught capital t. So which means that from here I have the value of my a naught and let me write it at one side. So then we have it. Let me write it over here. So my a naught comes from here is what? It's 1 upon t, the integration over one period of x of t dt. This a naught gives you what? This a naught gives you the average or the dc value. a naught is the average or the dc value of the signal. Is that fine? So this is how we calculate a naught. Then for a1, what do you have? For a1, a n sorry so for a n what do we do is we first multiply this equation we first multiply this equation with a cos of n omega naught t multiply with and let's say i name it one before integrating fine so so one implies what that you have to multiply it with a cos of n omega naught t so i would write this one that x of t would be multiplied with a cos of n omega naught t fine and this is then equal to a naught multiplied cos of n omega naught t then plus plus a1 you have a cos of omega naught t cos of omega naught t as it is and then you have a cos of n omega naught t similarly you have cos of uh, a2 cos of 2 omega naught t multiplied with the same thing plus up to plus if i write the final term you have a n 
cos of n omega naught t and this is also multiplied with a cos of n omega naught t fine similarly you have the 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 b term so b1 sine of omega naught t is multiplied with cos of n omega naught t similarly b2 b3 up to so on up to bn sine of n omega naught t is multiplied also with a cos of n omega naught t so why did i not write this with the green color so let me write it cos of n omega naught t fine so this is what i have done now what do i do it again i integrate over one period again i integrate over one period so what do i have this would be integration zero to t with respect to t similarly on this side zero to t the integration of all the terms with respect to t so have a look again a naught would go outside cos of n omega naught t over one period would be zero a one cause cause of one frequency multiplied cause of another frequency would be zero Similarly, B sine into cos would be zero. Sine into cos would again be zero. The only non-zero term, the only non-zero term that remains would be this one. The only non-zero term would be this one, cause where we have a cos of cos squared term. Fine. So the cos squared integration is not equal to zero. So now what I what do I have is that I have the integration from zero to t, x of t cos of n omega naught t with respect to t this is equal to the integration from 0 to t a n cos of cos squared of n omega naught t and this is with respect to t again is that fine now from mathematics we know what so let me write the the the, the zero to t as it is a n as it is and we know that this cos squared of n omega naught t is one plus cos of t by two so i would have one plus one plus cos of n omega naught t upon two and the integration is with respect to t is that okay so now the next step would be what the next step is that you have uh, you can split it into two parts if you multiply it inside so again this would be equal to zero to t you have an a n upon two with respect to t and then you have zero to t you have cause of n omega naught t you can take the two outside as well let me take the two outside so you have one upon two over here so again this term would be equal to zero this term would be equal to zero so this means what that i have got my a n so a n would be and this is divided by two so over there it would be multiplied by two a n by two would come outside right a n by two would come and let me let me draw it a n by 2 would now come outside the integration is only with respect to t so this would give you a t so this would be an a n by 2 multiplied t so which means that finally finally i have the result for a n so i have the result for a n is what t by 2 on this side 2 by 2 on the other side so 2 upon t the integration from 0 to t x of t multiplied cos of n omega naught t integrated with respect to t this is what this is a n this is a n this is how we find it similarly now for b n for b n what do you do is if you multiply the same thing now uh, with uh, with the sine of n omega naught t so if you have one again you multiply one with the sine of n omega naught t so if i have this one this is uh, x of t is multiplied with a sine of n omega naught t sine of n omega naught t so this would be equal to you know uh, uh, can you do it yourself or oh, let me you know write it so this would be equal to a naught a naught times sine of n omega naught t then you have plus a1 cause of n o cause of omega naught t multiplied with the sine of n omega naught t similarly plus up to plus 
you have an a n cos of n omega naught t multiplied with the sine of n omega naught t and similarly then you have plus now the b terms so b1 sine of omega naught t is then multiplied with the sine of n omega naught t similarly this goes in on plus up to plus b n sine of n omega naught t is multiplied with the sine of n omega naught t now what do you have have a look again have a look again a naught would come outside integrate integrate first sorry first integrate so if you integrate it over one period zero to t let's say i write dt similarly this one zero to t integrating the whole thing with respect to t what do you have again this everything would be zero right a naught would come out say sine over one period would be zero cos into sine is zero cos into sine is zero sine into sine is zero one frequency with another frequency over here i have only written cos this is also for sine sine into sine would be zero anything would be zero the only non-zero term would be this one the only non-zero term would be this one which is sine squared so sine squared would be again uh, one minus cos of uh, this right yes so so what do you have is let me write let me write so i would have an integration from zero to t x of t sine of n omega naught t dt this would be equal to the integration from zero to t and you would have a b n sine squared of n omega naught t with respect to t and this you could write as what uh, zero to t uh, b n and this would now be one minus cos of uh, n omega naught t by 2 1 minus cos of n omega naught t by 2 so these are the mathematical formulas you have uh, a b n by 2 would come outside of the integration b n by 2 uh, you have the integration of dt and similarly then the integration of cos would be again zero so i would write just the integration of cos or you can write it whole omega naught t dt fine so i have a call and no that was just a missed call no problem so bn by 2 and this would be t so this would uh, you know you have a 1 over 2 over here as well but this would come out to be 0 fine then you have a bn into t bn by 2 into t is equal to that hand side so what do i get i get my bn value from this particular equation that my bn is over here you have a t upon 2 over there you have a 2 upon t so you have a 2 upon t you have the integration from 0 to t x of t is multiplied with a sine of n omega naught t the integration is with respect to t that's it that is it so we took the what did we do what did we do in this video we took the complex exponential fourier series and out of that we made a trigonometric fourier series now we knew the formula for trigonom for exponential fourier coefficients but over here we had trigonometric fourier coefficients a not a and b n so for that we needed formulas and we calculated that formulas over here so that's it we already have seen, had seen the, the introduction to this trigonometric Fourier series, but this is, you can say, another, another revision or another detailed view or whatever you call it to be. So I believe I finish this video over here. That's all about trigonometric Fourier series. See you in the next video with the symmetry properties. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you and do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.